The honour of lifting the Premier League trophy falls to captain Vincent Company. Football goes like that. The arrival of Company, Belgian boy, tip for the top. Vincent Company! Vincent Company! Viva la Belgium. Feeling. Historical day, we've all enjoyed it. You know, every every club you sign for, they give you this the same pitch. We've got, you know, gr big project, great ambitions. We, you know, we, we want to achieve this, we want to achieve that, we want to kick on and be a better team. And City, I just happened to be lucky that City was the, the one club that didn't lie about it. I mean, it was, no, it was nothing like I imagined. But to be honest, I was more, I was just, I was a little bit stubborn as a kid, you know, and uh, I, I was more out to prove a point and I was more out to say, you know, I, I, I want to play, but I don't want to play for you anymore. So from that moment on, my mind was made up and, and City came, came calling and the uh, manager gave me a good feeling. I, I researched the club, I had a good feeling about it, but the first time I, came through the door it was it was weird because it's uh, it was a big club and at the same time a small club uh, big club because of its history because of its fan base because of 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 the stadium uh, and and small club because of you know the state of the facilities where we were training the probably still the culture a little bit of towards winning and and the lack of pressure that there was but at the same time um, I enjoyed both sides of it, the fact that it could, could also be a small club and, and just I enjoyed the camaraderie with the players and, and still talented players, but we just had so much fun that year. So the, the, first, the first game against West Ham was everything escalated quickly. Uh, I signed a couple of days before, trained on my own once I think, trained with the team once and it was a very light session. Didn't know the name of, didn't know the first names of my teammates or some of them I'd never seen before, and, and then off you go. Uh, that was a little bit the British style, which I like straight away because, you know, there's none of that training for a week, two weeks, or getting to know your teammates, just like, show yourself. And, and I enjoyed every minute of that game. It was physical, it went quick, we played really well. I played midfield and I played centre-back because uh, Michael Richards went off with a head injury. Um, and after that, you know, I met all the lads back in the nightclub at night and, you know, that's, that's how I got to know my teammates, you know, winning 3-0 and then out in the evening and, and Micah was back at that time, <laughs> so it was great. Vincent, how much did you enjoy your Premier League debut? Uh, I just loved it, I mean, uh, I was 100% enjoying it and uh, I just like it, you know, a lot of uh, duels, a lot of uh, energy, just love it. I signed for two days. I trained once yesterday with uh, with the guys. I don't even think everybody was on training. Today I played, I didn't even know the names, but it's just a lot of fun, I, I enjoyed it. Well, try to the fun, you are the Barkers man of the match. Here's the champagne, well done on your debut. Thank you very much. Conceded a free kick though, chance for Mika Richards and Richard Dunn to come forward once more. Yeah, my first goal was nothing special really. <laughs> I tried to hit it across with my right foot, it hit my knee, my left knee, and it went in. Here we go. Take my Alana run right away across and scrambled in. Vincent Company. Well, I'm not sure how much he knew about that as he came across from Alano. It's a good run. <laughs> it's a good run, but if you look at slow motion, it, it hits my my left knee, which was my standing leg really. So, um, but the run, you know, point, good points for the run. Company guys, it's in. It's his first City goal. <laughs> Good delivery from Milano. You see? Ah, a goal is a goal. 
I signed for City. First captain was Richard Dunn, Colo Toure, Carlos Tevez, and then um, Tevez went golfing for a few months, and, and then I was uh, captain by default for a bit, and then took over the next year. Just under 12 years since their last visit, Manchester City returned to Wembley Stadium. Here in 2011, the citizens head to the capital to fight it out with their Manchester neighbours united for the right to contest the final of the world's oldest cup competition. Merseysider in charge, Mike Dean, Vincent Company. A very interesting and popular selection as Manchester City skipper today. Well, I, I was I was filling in for Carlos actually in that game. I think he might have been suspended, and um, yeah, I just I just wanted that game to happen. Uh, I, I remember that we were getting closer to United at that time. We weren't catch we weren't catching up with them yet, and we lost most derbies before that one, if not if not all, and. But it was getting closer, like the derbies that we lost near that game were like 1-0 last minute goals from United or, you know, it, it wasn't like the very first derbies we played where we were completely outplayed. And I felt like that, that one came at the right time. It was a neutral venue, 45,000 reds, 45,000 blues. And we got a bit lucky in the first half. And then second half, I think we, we felt a bit liberated and, and then we were the, the better team from that moment onwards. And, and it was a defining derby really against a, a very strong United team. Oh, and it's given away by Carrick. And this is Torre. Just a city take the lead. Yaya ya, Torre. It's weird to say, but almost all the City fans, we felt like we won it after the United game. Like, as much as we enjoyed winning it against Stoke and lifting the trophy and, and everything came to fruition on that day, just winning the derby in front of, you know, you had 90,000 monks that turned up for that game and just winning that one was like, I remember we celebrated as if, as if we won the trophy. And then you had to kind of realise that, oh, hold on, there's one more game. What's it like to actually lift the FA Cup? Yeah, it's an unbelievable, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's, um, it's something that I wish um, for myself in the future and for this club to do much, much, many more times. I mean, you know, this is something 35 years and you know, we're there now. So I said, <laughs> we put a foundation down, we're going to build a house on it now. What was effectively the title decider against United three games from the end? Is this a stuff like a boyhood dream sort of thing, scoring a goal in a game like that? Yeah, yeah. But that game is, in my mind, that game in my mind will mostly be remembered for the amount of pressure that was on the game.
the most important Manchester derby in recent memory is about to start. You know, the fans are so grateful for the fact that things are changing and, you know, if you give 100%, you always got a good chance to be appreciated in, in Manchester. Um, but this game was the game. That's another City corner. Stoppage time, two minutes of it at the end of the first half. A few chances. Killed him by David Silva and turned in by Vincent Company. Manchester City ahead, right on half time. Cometh the hour, cometh the captain. against the big rivals and, and to be as solid as we were as a team and then to score the winning goal was, um, was a special moment. Vincent Company may well have scored one of the biggest goals in Manchester City's recent history. I remember feeling exhausted after the celebration. You know, if you, if you, if you shout as hard as you can and, and, and you let all your power out at once, <laughs> it's, it's just exhausting. <laughs> And I remember walking back very slowly, thinking I, I need to ca catch my breath here a little bit. I I love the derby because of of the banter and the rivalry. You know, I don't. I I understand that some some might feel genuine hate for one another, but I, that's not what I feel. I just feel like I want to win that game more than any other game because. Um, I know a lot of people who are associated to that club, and 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 it's, it's it goes both ways, you know. <laughs> United fans in my family don't want me to win on derby day as much as they like me, and I want to win that game as much as they want to win the game. But I think that's if I think if you live outside of Manchester, you can take it out of context sometimes, where you think like, oh, it's it's all hate and this and. And I don't think it is, um, from being in Manchester now for a long time, from being around uh, just the normal supporters, you feel like we, we both love our clubs and at the same time we, we're, all, we're all the same, talk the same, behave the same virtually, uh, but some talk a little bit more nonsense than others and usually they wear a red shirt. <laughs> Up steps Vincent Company. He collects his winner's medal. The honour of lifting the Premier League trophy falls to captain Vincent Company. 1937, 1968, now 2012. For the third time in their history, Manchester City... You know, it was, it was, it was a special season because I feel 2012 when we won the first league, we deserved to win the league. We, we were the best team, but we were just not consistent enough. And United weren't as good as they were in previous years. And yet they managed to kind of create a gap with us because they were uh, very consistent in, especially in the lesser games, because obviously we, we, we beat them that year. And, um, and then I don't know what happened. They, they just lost it in the last month. and. We got it right and we, we did what we did that season. We, we had a strong period and a weak period and we finished luckily in a strong period and um, got it over the line as everybody knows with, with Cunaguero's goal. Do you know what? For some reason we've done it before this season and uh, I never stopped believing. Never ever did I stop believing. And uh, when Edin scored that goal, um, it just reminded me of it, it just reminded me of a few moments this season when against Tottenham we scored in the last minute and uh, against Sunderland we came back from two down. And you know I, we've done it this season before, so we had no reasons to not believe. <laughs> Yourself a nice souvenir as well, haven't you? Yeah, I was in. We were in the tunnel before the players come out, 
And I know Vinny, I've known Vinny for a long time, and uh, so it gives you your armband. And he kind of went, go on then. So I've got it there, and that's, that's going straight on eBay tonight. If anybody wants to buy it, it's got a starting price of 500 grand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I doubt we'll see it. Cheers. Uh, every manager is different. I've got even started before I was a captain. I was, I was uh, one of the main players under Mark Hughes. And so I already had a lot of responsibility and I felt like I was always empowered and, and even um, uh, supported. Then uh, the next stage was under uh, Roberto Mancini, who was a captain himself for a long period in his career. And, and he had a vision and an idea of how a captain should be, so you have to adapt a little bit to it. But um, inevitably, I always come back to the conclusion that I just need to be myself and you know I can't be the captain that the manager wants me to be, I have to be the captain that I want to be and if that's not, not good enough then I can live with it. Um, then on the Pellegrini, which you know, it was, um, it was a lot of work because we had a whole set of, of, of you know, rules and fines and things that had to be uh, respected and it was always expected from the captain to, to make everybody respect those things and uh, you know, you kind of a little bit um, taking on, you know, the role of the person who has to do a little bit of the nasty work, and you know, it's less enjoyable, but it's part of the part of the things that can that can be asked from you. And like I said, with with time and with experience, you know, you you just learn how to handle with these kind of situations where when a manager demands certain things from you, um, which are different from other managers. And then now the last period with 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 Pep, it's been it's been an easy ride because he's so demanding himself that you don't necessarily need to uh, step over boundaries to, to kind of get that drive out of all, your, all the players. He, he does that naturally and all you're doing is a little bit emphasizing or pushing, nudging if you like in the right direction because the manager is so clear on what he wants and, and that's the easy, easiest way to be a captain and, and, most, most in, and also uh, most enjoyable. <laughs> Oh, West Ham. I don't know. I felt like I was going to score in that go in that in that game for some reason. Here we go. <laughs> Strike <laughs> striker's instinct. Swung over. Company scores. Two 0 We felt so much more comfortable in, in that game, although there's not a big difference between the game against West Ham we played that year and the game against QPR we played a few years before that. And yet I felt so much more comfortable in that game just because we'd been through it already. And nothing went wrong that day. I think it's a 2-0 comfortable win. And like, if, if you ever asked what, what it is to, to have experience then you just show both games, QPR game and the West Ham game in, I think, two years' time. The difference between how we performed on, on the last day was, was, was you know, it, it was telling, really. Manchester City are Premier League champions for 2013-2014. Celebrations after, was that that gentle sliding tackle on Siena, was it? <laughs> Well, she's gonna have to, you know, she's, she's being brought up to be a tough girl, so <laughs> she got up and, you know, proud parents. As the fans say it all the time, we never give up and we, we fight till the end and this is what we, this is the reward today. My family is so great, it's the greatest family in my whole world. <laughs> and I bet you agree with that. <laughs> I can never disagree with my daughter. And there's been so many uh, happy memories, but there's been some tough moments as well. What would you say has been your hardest moment or period uh, while you've been with the club? So after the West Ham game, the season after that, um, the second season under um, under under Pellegrini, yeah, it, it it wasn't necessarily so everything was linking, you know, a few injuries, few few this and that, and at the same time, I think we'd lost our intensity. And because we didn't have a, a clear, clear structure in 
we weren't a defensive team, so we had to attack and we had to be good in attacking. Otherwise, we'd always we'd always come second. And uh, and that year was exactly that. We lost a little bit of intensity. We got a little bit complacent because we won the league, and I think everything collapsed. Not not necessarily in terms of desire, into, but but you know you just sometimes have moments like this where you try your, your hardest, which I always do. And, uh, and it seems to just land the wrong way. What would you put that down to then? I think we're all humans at the end of the day and we try and be perfect but we can't. And um, I did try my best but sometimes you take all the problems of everyone else on, on yourself and maybe um, maybe I did it a little bit too much, you know, I tried to solve everyone else's problems when I wasn't performing myself. Um, yeah, that season, that's how I would say it happened, but I, I learned so much from it and I became so, so calm after that. Um, so much more relaxed and, and so much more um, focused on the right things, which, is, which has been a good step for me. Swung over, it's knotted down. Vincent Company scores. City take the lead at St Mary's. I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird because usually I don't remember celebrating like this. So it's only after that I, I see the images, I'm like, oh, what have I done again? <laughs> and, and, and also it's, it's just what, what you get and what you see is, is what I feel. And many times I've climbed a mountain before I get onto the header or I get onto the, the end of a ball to score a goal. And, and that's what, what you see, either joy or explosion of, of emotions. It's because I've been climbing a mountain before. And, and if you look at the United game, at that time I was, I was fit all the time. But if you look at the United game when, when I scored that goal in 2012, I think um, it's as if the club was climbing a mountain for so many years and I felt that pressure on my shoulders and, and I felt that explosion is the same as all the fans you see in the stand over there in the corner. I think what people have never really understood with me is that aside from having had some injuries, um, I'm actually I'm um, really lucky to be a, a really good athlete, naturally. So I still feel mobile, I still feel strong, I still feel like um, I'm improving and, and learning so much more about the game. Um, I'm not stressed or nervous about any kind of possible scenario because I've prepared for every kind of uh, eventuality. But I'm enjoying the game more than I've ever enjoyed the game. Probably my first year at City and my last year at City now I've been the best in my career, so um, uh, you want to make it last as long as you can, for sure. I've put my whole life in a game. I started when I was five and I never really put on my football boots and just started kicking a ball against the wall. I was always thinking about the game. I was always uh, paying attention to what, what my coaches said and, and what people around football said. I feel I can still give something back. You know, we'll see at what level, we'll see to to what extent. But um, in many in many ways, uh, I've got too much. Uh, I've received too much from the game to just put it behind me and, and go on a, a 45 year long holiday. It's, it's not for me. I'll be connected with City for the rest of my life as a fan, as an employee, as, a, as, a, as an ambassador, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, you know, it's beyond kind of what we, you know, whatever City decides or whatever I decide, it's, it's not something we can undo. You know, we've had 10 years and 10 years at City uh, in the transitions we've had is like 30 years in another club, trust me. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's cemented, there's nothing we can do about it. We, we, <laughs> we're tied to each other for life, but um, it's a good thing. And my family's from Manchester, my kids are Mancunians. Um, 
you know, we're here for the long term and um, as fans, as, as whatever capacity, we'll, we'll always be there. Can you do a Mancunian accent then? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs>